This is brought to you by the Praetorian on both YouTube and Facebook. A landrus is a domesticated, locally adapted, traditional variety of a species of animal or plant that has developed over time through adaptation to its natural and cultural environment of agriculture and pastoralism and due to isolation from other populations of the species. 1. Landruses are generally distinguished from cultivars and breeds in the standardized sense. Although the term landrus breed is sometimes used as distinguished from the term standardized breed when referring to cattle, 5. Specimens of a landrus tend to be genetically very similar, though more diverse than members of a standardized or formal breed. Some standardized animal breeds originate from attempts to make landruses more consistent through selective breeding and a landrus may become a more formal breed with the creation of a breed registry and or publication of a breed standard. In such a case, one may think of the landrus as a stage in breed development. However, in other cases, formalizing a landrus may result in the genetic resource of a landrus being lost through crossbreeding. Landruses are distinct from ancestral wild species of modern stock and separate species or subspecies derived from the same ancestor as modern domestic stock. Not all landruses derive from ancient stock largely unmodified by human breeding interests. In several cases, most commonly dogs and horses, Domestic animals have escaped in sufficient numbers in an area to breed feral populations that, through evolutionary pressure, can form new landruses in only a few centuries. In other cases, simple failure to maintain breeding regimens can do the same. For example, selectively bred cultivars can become new landruses when loosely selective re reproduction is applied. Increasing adoption of and reliance upon modern, purposefully selected plant strains, considered improved, scientifically bred to be uniform and stable, has led to a reduction in biodiversity. The majority of the genetic diversity of domesticated species lies in landruses and other traditionally used varieties, a reservoir of genetic resources. Characteristics General features that characterize a landrus may include It is morphologically distinctive and identifiable, i.e., has particular and recognizable characteristics or properties, yet remains dynamic. It is genetically adapted to and has a reputation for being able to withstand the conditions of the local environment, including climate, disease and pests, even cultural practices. It is not the product of formal, governmental, organizational, or private breeding programs and may lack systematic selection, development, and improvement by breeders. 
It is maintained and fostered less deliberately than a standardized breed, with its genetic isolation principally a matter of geography acting upon whatever animals that happen to be brought by humans to a given area. It has a historical origin in a specific geographic area, will usually have its local names, and will often be classified according to the intended purpose. Where yield, e.g. of a grain or fruit crop, can be measured, a landrus will show high stability of yield, even under adverse conditions, but a moderate yield level, even under carefully managed conditions. At the level of genetic testing, its heredity will show a degree of integrity, but still some genetic heterogeneity, i.e. genetic div diversity. Not every source on the topic enumerates each of these criteria, and they may be weighted differently depending on a given source's focus, example, governmental regulation, biological sciences, agribusiness, anthropology and culture, environmental conservation, pet keeping, and breeding, etc. Additionally, not all cultivars agreed to be landrises exhibit all possible landrous characteristics. Plant landrises have been the subject of more intensive study, and the majority of the academic literature about landrises is focused on agricultural botany, not animal husbandry. Most plant landrises are associated with traditional agricultural systems. While many landrous animals are associated with farming, other domestic animals have been put to use as modes of transportation, as companion animals, for sporting purposes, and other non-farming uses, so their geographic distribution may differ. For example, horse landrises are less common, because human use of them for transport has meant that they have moved with people more commonly and constantly than most other domestic animals, reducing the incidence of populations locally genetically isolated for extended periods. Terminology The word Landrus means country breed, German, Landras, and close cognates of it are found in various Germanic languages. The term was first defined in German by Kurt von Rumpker in 1908 and more clearly described in Dutch in 1909 by U. J. Mansholt, who wrote that landrises have better stability of their characteristics and resistance capacity to tolerate adverse influences but lower production capacity than cultivars and are apt to change genetically when moved to another environment. H. Kiesling added in 1912 that a landrus is a mixture of phenotypic forms, despite relative outward uniformity and great adaptability to its natural and human environment. The word entered non-academic English in the early 1930s by way of the Danish landrus pig, a particular breed of lop-eared swine. Aside, aside from some standardized breeds having landrus in their names, actual landruses and standardized breeds are sometimes further confused when the word breed is used very broadly. As one example, a glossary in a Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations FAO, guideline defines landrus or landrus breed treated synonymously as a breed that has largely developed through adaptation to the natural environment and traditional production system in which it has been raised. It also defines breed expansively and in multiple ways, with a focus on treating differing senses, landrous breed, and standardized breed, as the equivalent for genetic management purposes, the focus of the FAO guideline. It does clearly distinguish between the two concepts, however, both with a distinct definition of standardized breed 
and in the main body of the guideline, referring to the interaction between landresses and standardized breeds, and that FAO document uses breed to mean the unit of conservation, i.e. the specific population of animals that is to be conserved. Similarly, the Oxford English Dictionary defines landrus as a local cultivar or animal breed that has been improved by traditional agricultural methods, without specifying which definition of the breed is cross-referenced. The definition is also at odds with some peer-reviewed material, in which lack of formal, scientific breeding for genetic improvement, e.g. uniformity and stability, is characteristic of landrises. Such sources clearly distinguish landrises from cultivar cultivars. A landrus native to, or produced for a long time, e.g. 100 years or longer, within the agricultural system in which it is found is referred to as an autochthonous landrus, while an introduced one is termed an allochthonous landrus. Within academic agronomy, the term autochthonous landrus is sometimes used with a more specific, productivity-related definition, synthesized by A.C. Zevin from previous definitions beginning with Mansholtz. It is not often encountered outside that field. A. These terms are most often applied to plants, with animals more often being referred to as indigenous or native. B. Many languages do not use separate terms, like landrus and breed in English, but instead, rely on extended description to convey such distinctions. C. The FAO notes, the distinction between breeds and ecotypes within breeds is not very objective, and generally involves cultural rather than genetic factors. The term landrus breed is sometimes encountered, in various domestic species, including pigs, goats, sheep, and geese, some standardized breeds include landrus in their names, and landrus breeds, with capital L, is sometimes used to refer to them collectively. D, but may be used more ambiguously to include actual landruses. E, similar ambiguity may be encountered in the use of terms such as ancient breed, native breed, not to be confused with native species, old breed, and indigenous breed. Farmer's variety, usually applied to local cultivars or seen as intermediate between a landrus and a cultivar, may also include landruses when referring to plant varieties not subjected to formal breeding programs. The term breed itself has multiple de definitions and uses F, some of which may encompass the concept of landruses. For example, the FAO Commission on Genetic Resources for Food and Agriculture CGRFA, guideline defines breed for genetic management purposes that overlaps with many definitions of landrus and defines landrus or landrus breed as a type of breed. Biodiversity and Conservation Due to their adaptation to the local environment, some farmers using scientifically improved domesticates also continue to raise landruses because the latter often exhibit benefits ranging from lower cost and cultural, e.g. culinary, preference to superior hardiness in a less than ideal climate and better disease resistance. There may be more variety specific pluses. A plant landrus may have, example, lower fertilizer requirements, or something about a plant or animal product's texture, color, or ease of use might be a major factor. Landruses are often free from much intellectual property and other reg regulatory encumbrances. However, in some jurisdictions, a focus on their production may result in missing out on some benefits afforded to producers of genetically selected and homogeneous organisms, including breeders' rights legislation, easier availability of loans and other business services, even the right to share seed or stock with others, depending on how favorable the laws in the area are to high-yield agribusiness interests. 
As Regine Anderson of the Fridtjof Nansen Institute, Norway, and the Farmers' Rights Project puts it, agricultural biodiversity is being eroded. This trend is putting at risk the ability of future generations to feed themselves. To reverse the trend, new policies must be implemented worldwide. The irony of the matter is that the poorest farmers are the stewards of genetic diversity. Protecting farmer interests and protecting biodiversity is at the heart of the International Treaty on Plant Genetic Resources for Food and Agriculture, the Plant Treaty for short, under the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, FAO, through its concerns are not exclusively limited to landresses. Plants In 2005, a working definition of plant landrises was proposed, a dynamic populations of a cultivated plant that has historical origin, distinct identity, and lacks formal crop improvement, as well as often being genetically diverse, locally adapted and associated with traditional farming systems. Another definition, dating to 1975, of the term landris is used in botany, and by extension in agriculture, horticulture, anthropology, etc., was provided by, by J. R. Harlan. Landris populations are often highly variable in appearance, but they are each identifiable morphologically and have certain genetic integrity. Farmers usually give them local names. A landris has particular properties or characteristics. Some are considered early maturing and some late. Each has a reputation for adaptation to particular soil types according to the traditional peasant soil classifications, e.g. heavy or light, warm or cold, dry or wet, strong or weak. They also may be classified according to expected usage. Among cereals, different landrises are used for flour, for porridge, for bulgur, and for malt to make beer, etc. All components of the plant population are adapted to local climatic conditions, cultural practices, and disease and pests. But most importantly, they are genetically diverse. They are balanced populations, variable, in equilibrium with both environment and pathogens, and genetically dynamic. Development Landrous plants are grown from seeds that have not been systematically selected and marketed by seed companies, nor developed by plant breeders. The label landrises include all those regional cultigens that are highly heterogeneous, but with enough characteristics in common to permit their recognition as a group. This includes all cultigens cultivated without any specific nomenclature and value. A landrus identified with a unique feature and selected for uniformity over some time for maintenance of the characteristic features of the population can evolve into a farmer's variety or even a modern cultivar as in many crops, for example, the Janus Cajun Muridi in the case of pigeon peas. Conversely, a modern cultivar grown over time can evolve into a landrus, especially when self-seeded and some human sele selection is applied. Conservation Efforts A significant proportion of farmers around the world continue to grow landrus crops. However, as industrialized agriculture spreads, cultivars, which are selectively bred for high yield, rapid growth, disease, and drought resistance, and other commercial production values are supplanting many landrises, putting more and more of them at risk of extinction. Using Europe as an example, data collected for an agricultural study published in 2008 showed that landrous cereal crops began to decline in Europe in the 19th century with selective seed improvements and continued with varietal improvement in the 20th century, such that cereal landrises have largely fallen out of use in Europe.
Landrus cultivation in Central and Northwest Europe was almost eradicated by the early 20th century due to economic pressure to grow improved, modern cultivars. While many in the region are already extinct, some have survived in commercial European farming by being passed from generation to generation of farmers and have also been revived by enthusiasts outside Europe to preserve European agricultural and food heritage elsewhere. These survivals are usually for specific uses, such as thatch, and traditional European cuisine, and craft beer brewing. Systematic preservation efforts for these cereal strains are ongoing, in situ, and online searchable germplasm collections, seed banks, coordinated by Biodiversity International and the National Institute of Agricultural Botany, UK. However, more may need to be done, because plant genetic variety, the source of crop health, and seed quality, depends on a diversity of landrises and other traditionally used varieties. Efforts, as of 2008, were mostly focused on Iberia, the Balkans, and European Russia, and dominated by species from mountainous areas. Despite their incompleteness, these efforts have been described as crucial in preventing the extinction of many of these local ecotypes. Ecotypes Animals One definition of a landrus applied to both plants and animals is which has developed over a long period and as a result has adapted to the local natural environment in which it lives. Geneticist D. Philip Sponenberg described animal breeds as consistent and predictable genetic entities falling into several classes, the landrus, the standardized breed, modern type breeds, industrial strains, and feral populations. He describes landruses as an early stage of breed development, created by a combination of a founder effect, isolation, and environmental pressures. Isolation prevents the further introduction of genetic material. Human selection for production goals is typical of most landruses. One definition of a landrus, as applied to animals, is a biological race of domestic, animal adapted to thrive in a specific land or locality. Another, applied to both plants and animals, is a variety which has developed over a long period and as a result has adapted to the local natural environment in which it lives. Cats There are various distinctive landruses of domestic cats around the world, including the Aegean, Cyprus, domestic long-haired, domestic short-haired, Kellis, and Soko, among others. The van cat of modern-day Turkey is a landrus of symbolic and, disputed, cultural value to Turks, Armenians, and Kurds. Many standardized breeds have rather recently, within a century or less, been derived from landruses. Examples, often called natural breeds, include Arabian Mao, Egyptian Mao, Korat, Karelian Bobtail, Maine Coon, Manx, Norwegian Forest Cat, Siberian, and Thai, which is the landrous ancestor of modern Siamese cats, among many others. In some cases, such as the Turkish Angora and Turkish Van breeds, and their possible derivation from the Van Cat Landrus, the relationships are not entirely clear. Cattle Cattle Yakushin Cattle a landrus from the Sakha Republic, part of the Russian Federation, noted as the northernmost landrus, and the most genetically dissimilar of all cattle. This group of cattle may represent a fourth aurochs domestication event, and the third event among Bos Taurus, type aurochs, and may have diverged from the Near East group some 35,000 years ago. Yakushin cattle are the last remaining native Toronto-Mongolian cattle breed in Siberia, 
and one of only a few pure Toronto Mongolian breeds remaining worldwide. 31. Studies of autosomal DNA markers show a high genetic distinctiveness and point to long-term genetic isolation from other breeds. Geographic isolation beyond the normal northern limit of the species range can be assumed to be the cause. Icelandic cattle, with a population dating from the era of Icelandic settlement, they are likely the oldest landris in Europe, owing to their genetic isolation for most of that time. Other examples of landris bovines include Pineywoods, Florida Cracker, Ankle Watusi, and Randall Cattle. Dogs Dog landrises and the selectively bred dog breeds that follow breed standards vary widely depending on their origins and purpose. 35. Landrises in dogs are defined as dog or any livestock animal has been bred without a formal registry, although their breeders may have kept written or informal pedigrees of their animals. These are distinguished from dog breeds that have breed standards, breed clubs, and registry registries. Landrous dogs have more variety in their appearance than do standardized dog breeds. An example of a dog landrous with a related standardized breed with a similar name is the Collie. The Scotch Collie is a landrous, while the Rough Collie and the Border Collie are standardized breeds. They can be very different in appearance, though the Rough Collie in particular was developed from the Scotch Collie by inbreeding to fix certain highly desired traits. In contrast to the landrous, in the various standardized collie breeds, purebred individuals closely match a breed standard appearance, but might have lost other useful characteristics, and have developed undesirable traits linked to inbreeding. Similarly, the ancient landrous dogs of the Fertile Crescent that led to the Saluki breed excels in running down game across open tracts of the hot desert, but conformation bred individuals of the breed might not be able to chase and catch desert hares. The now extinct St. John's Water Dog, a landrus that was developed in Newfoundland, Canada, was the foundational stock for several purpose-bred dogs, such as the Labrador Retriever, Chesapeake Bay Retriever, Cape Shore Water Dog, and Newfoundland. Another example of a North American landrus the Carolina dog or yellow dog was developed from dogs originally from Asia. It has also been established now as a standardized breed. Goats British primitive goat, a landrus dating to the Neolithic era and possibly existing as feral herds for that long. Icelandic goat, a landrus which like many other animal breeds in Iceland, can be reliably dated to the age of settlement, a little over 1,000 years ago. The population is presumed to have been genetically isolated for nearly the entirety of that period. Spanish goat, the native landrus of Spain that survives in larger numbers in the American South as the brush goat or scrub goat, among other names. Some standardized, Selective breeds that are derived from landrusses include the Dutch landrus, Swedish landrus, and Finnish landrus goats. The confusingly named Danish landrus is a modern mix of three different breeds, one of which was a landrus named breed. Sheep Shetland sheep Spalesaw sheep, which dates to the Iron Age. Welsh mountain sheep Barbados Blackbelly Icelandic Sheep Horses, Ponies, and Donkeys It is rare for landrusses among domestic horses to remain isolated, due to human use of horses for transportation, thus causing horses to move from one local population to another. Examples of horse landrusses include isolated island populations, such as the Shetland Pony and Icelandic Horse, insular landrusses in Greece and Indonesia, and, on a broader scale, 
New World populations derived from the founder stock of colonial Spanish horse. The Yakushin and Mongolian horses of Asia have unimproved characteristics. The heavy draft type of domestic horse developed in Europe has itself differentiated into many separate landrises or breeds. The wild progenitor of the domestic horse is now extinct. The Prowalski's horse, Equus ferris Prowalski, is a wholly separate subspecies with a different number of chromosomes than domesticated horses, E.F. Cabalis, and has never been successfully domesticated. Pigs The Mulefoot pig breed originated as a landrus, but has been a standardized breed since the early 1900s. The standardized swine breeds named landrus are not landruses, and often not even derived from one, but from other breeds with landrus in their names. The Danish landrus pig breed, pedigreed in 1896 from the actual local landrus, is the principal ancestor of the American landrus, the 1930s. The Swedish Landrus is derived from the Danish and from other Scandinavian breeds, as was the British Landrus breed, which was established as late as 1950. The Bodan Pig was once a feral Landrus on Kangaroo Island, South Australia. Poultry Landrus chicken varieties include Danish Hen A true Landrus is native to Denmark. Icelandic Chicken Jerhons A Landrus breed native to Norway Swedish Flower Hen Landrus duck varieties include Danish Landrus duck A true Landrus is native to Denmark, or perhaps a former one the modern Danish Landrus duck is somewhat interbred. Swedish Blue Duck, a modern breed, is derived from a Landrus of the same name. Landrus goose varieties include Pilgrim Goose A North American Landrus, thought to descend from Western European stock dating back to the 17th century. The variety is associated with the Mayflower Pilgrims of Plymouth Colony, and has also been standardized as a formal breed since 1939, asterisk 20 Landrus Goose. May be derived from true Landrus Geese. Danish Landrus Goose A true Landrus Note, many standardized breeds named Landrus, e.g. the 20 Landrus Goose, are not true Landrus breeds, but may be derived from them. Rabbits Gotland Rabbit, a rare Landrus of Sweden, not entirely limited to Gotland, subject to conservation, but not development efforts by breeders. Mellorud Rabbit, a very rare Landrus of Sweden, subject to conservation, but not development efforts by breeders. brought to you by the Praetorian on both YouTube and Facebook. We thank you for your participation. If you enjoyed, please like, subscribe, share, make comments. 
We love feedback. Thank you.